Hello graphic designers, this is Mr. Graham here, and I'm going to take you through how to finish up this salad man picture. So last time we left off, um, we have our head, we have our eyes, nose, mouth, and body, and even a suit on. So this guy is ready for a nice formal out, uh, formal night out on the town. Um, we're going to take a look at how to uh, finish him off. We're going to start with the hair. Now inside of the paintbrush, there is a brush called Vegetation 2. We can click on the brushes and we can find that in the lower left hand corner and there's also a Vegetation 1. This is the brush that you could use and we're going to create a new layer. So we'll click on the new layer button here and we can use this brush and fill in kind of a base color with the vegetation and then do kind of a highlight color. Now due to the limitations of the brush, um, this is kind of what it looks like. Now there's other kinds of vegetation, we're going to show you also how to create your own brush. So hang on to your hat, I'm going to turn off the visibility of all of these layers so far. And except for one layer, which I'm going to make my new layer, I'm going to go to uh, Google Images and I'm going to type in grass silhouette. Copy the image and paste that as a new layer inside of GIMP. Now I'm going to take a selection of this and I'm going to get a little bit closer and I'll use the ellipse selection tool a few blades of grass there. And then go to edit. So we go to edit and we go to copy. And right away in our brush area here, so if you look at our brushes here on the right side, we have already in here, right after we copy it, a brush mask. So we can take this brush mask, I'm going to deselect this, turn that layer off, and turn on my other layer. I'm going to go ahead and paint on some hair using that brush. I just going to again, changing the colors up a little bit so it doesn't just look like a green blob. So I painted that, and now I can erase the excess that I don't want to be as part of the hair. Now something that's happening over my layers menu is that I'm starting to get a lot of layers. And if I want to move my character over a little bit, you know, I have to move the hair, and then I gotta move the eyes, and that all takes a bunch more time. It'd be a lot easier if I could group them together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a group. So the second button that's right next to the layer button creates a layer group. I'm gonna click on the hair, hold shift, Click on the last one. Actually, I'm just going to drag all of these into my layer group one at a time. And after I get them into the group, I might have to reorganize them, but that's not a big deal. Now this way, when I need to move something, I can just click on the layer group and it'll move 
everything all together. So now that we have all of our layers linked together into a group, it's going to be easier to resize and position all of these layers together as one big thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just stretch out my character and make them a little bigger. And now I'm going to move on to the eyebrows. And I'm going to use a picture of chives for the eyebrows. I'm going to open up my downloads, click and drag the chives into GIMP, and we're going to select by color. So I'm going to go to select by color and click on the white area. Now if you notice, I can adjust the threshold over on the left in the properties area. And if I adjust the threshold too high, it's going to select too many colors. But what I want to do is select all the interior white areas, and then go, and then create a layer mask. There, and I'm going to transform the layers alpha. Uh, use the selection and add. Now it cuts out the chives, and so if we invert the colors of the layer mask, it will show just the chives and a nice clean selection. So I'm going to go to select none, and then I'm going to go to image. Our colors and invert. So because I inverted the colors on the layer map, what was white, not black, and so now it's cutting out the opposite using the layer map. I can resize. Size picture. And place. Make a duplicate. Duplicate. And I'm going to flip them. the scale tool and to flip this uh, this chives picture I'm gonna go to image and go to transform and flip horizontally. I gave you the wrong option there. Instead of going to image and transform, go to layer and transform. We're gonna go to flip horizontal. Then we're going to move it into position. And there we go. Now something we forgot to put on the face were the cauliflower ears. Now because the cauliflower ears are a PNG file, it becomes really easy. So a PNG file is a type of file that can uh, retain its transparency. You'll see in a minute. So I'm going to take the cauliflower picture from my download, drop it into GIMP, and you'll notice it's already cut out. So sometimes when you're creating a project, you can find a PNG file. Um, it can save you a bunch of time uh, to creating a project. All I have to do is scale this down, rotate it, and now I have cauliflower ears. Right click, duplicate. And flip horizontally. Layer transform. Flip horizontally. I'm dragging the picture of the glasses. I'm going to click on the magic wand tool or the 
fuzzy select field. And I'm going to click right on the bridge of glasses. Now this has a pretty good job. In order to select more of it, I'm going to increase the threshold to about 100. And then I'm going to switch to the add the current selection. You can also use the shift button on the keyboard as you click with this fuzzy select wheel. I've selected too much, so now I'm going to switch to subtract the selection, or I can hold alt on the keyboard. This works well when I have a nice selection of glasses. I'm going to create a layer mask using the selection. And uh, go ahead. Now, using a variety of selection techniques, cutting out and layer out, I want you to make it look like the monkey is holding this salad sugar and he's threatening this sore patient who happens to look like salad. I'll show you what mine looks like when it's done. But remember, you can use any of these selection tools on this first line right here to go help you. To finish this off, we're going to create some blurring in the background, put a blue tint over everything, and then maybe throw a speech bubble in there to make kind of a joke. So first we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call it blue, and we're going to put this layer on top of everything and color it blue. So I'm going to get the paint bucket, and I'm going to select a bluish color. And this will simulate the blue lights that come, like the blue fluorescent light. And I'm going to change the blending mode here from normal to HSL color. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of the blue color, blue layer, so that it tints everything a little bit blue but doesn't make it so crazy blue that it doesn't make sense. And what this bluish tint does is it just kind of merges everything together. To make it more, look more realistic, I'm going to blur the store picture so that it looks like you photographed this. And I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to increase this. About 4 pixels is good. And I'm on that store picture and just blurring that store picture. Lastly, we'll create some text. So I click on the A. I'm going to click on a layer there. And I'm going to type in, oh no, the salad shooter. If I want to change the text, I can change the text font here. I can increase the size, I can change the color. And then there's other options in here as well. To make a speech bubble, I'm going to create a shape and make sure that shape looks like a speech bubble. When you're all done with your picture, you can have something that looks something like this. You have a text box with one of your characters saying something. You have a bluish tint over the whole thing. The background has been blurred out a little bit. You have clean selections on each of your images, and you've used a wide variety of selection techniques. This will prepare you to do your first summer project, the self-portrait project. All right, graphic designers, good job getting through this very long tutorial. I wish you luck in the future. Make sure you save it as a JPEG and turn it into Schoology when you're all done.